Salam and hi, my name is Muhammad Shafiq Ridwan. I am graduate student from Hiram's Lab in School of Mechanical at University of Technology Malaysia. I will be presenting a research title, modeling of the flame synthesis of single wall carbon nanotube in non premium flame with aerosol catalyzed. This is the introduction, methodology, result and discussion, and also the conclusion. The CNT have a good property which make it unique compared to other substances because it has good mechanical strength which exceeds the stainless steel. The thermal property is also higher compared to the paper. It is suitable in conducting electricity and could act as a heat transfer medium. To compare the single wall carbon nanotube and multi wall carbon nanotube can be made by differentiate the number of wall. Actually, the single wall carbon nanotube has only single layer of wall while the multi wall has uh, more than only layer of CNT. A uh, single wall carbon nanotube has uh, good elastic properties such as have higher young modulus property uh, but lower tensile strength. Uh, to produce CNT, two methods are conventionally used, which is chemical vapor deposition, CVD, uh, and the other one is the flame synthesis. Uh, why do we need to use flame synthesis? Uh, actually, flame synthesis is process is simple and cost saving compared to chemical vapor deposition. It can produce large volume uh, production and lastly, uh, save time because of rapid pro production process. Uh, basically, they have two types of flame in flame synthesis, which is non premium flame and uh, premium flames. Uh, non premium flame, also known as diffusion flame, uh, they have also three types of configuration which is uh, normal diffusion flame, inverse diffusion flame, and also counter diffusion, counter diffusion flames. Mm -hmm. Each configuration has different outcome and effects. Uh, most likely used in normal diffusion flame uh, configuration. Uh, it can be seen in the figure C. Uh, in the present study, the non primitive flame is just due to the advantage compared to the primitive flame. Firstly, it can avoid uh, danger and hazard from uh, come from primitive flame, ideal for highly scalable use of different fuel type, generate large flames, uh, offer more sampling size or sampling space, allow multiple thermochemical profile and flame structure. Uh, catalyst is the most fitted element in flame synthesis in order to grow CNT. Because without catalyst, the CNT can't be produced. It is because the catalyzed material itself has act as a substrate to grow the CNT. The analogy is like the uh, catalyst act as a baseline, uh, baseline which we will develop a home, uh, which means that the catalyst provide place where the carbon precursor can be deposited and lastly form the CNT. Two types of catalysts are used in the flame synthesis, which is solid type. Uh, in form of beads, and the other one is aerosol, aerosol type uh, in form of small particle. Catalyst investigation includes the consideration of material of the catalyst and the method of introducing the catalyst inside the flame. In this study, the catalyst is introduced in the oxidizer tube. The advantage of aerosol type catalyst is low faster polyethylene time, about millisecond, compared to the solid types and it provides a continuous supply of the catalyst in the burning region compared to the solid one. All right, this is the model, uh, modeling, as you can see in the figure, the actual rig schematic diagram and the model geometry. The model geometry resembles the actual rig with same dimension and boundary uh, conditions such as ambient pressure uh, and the temperature is at 27 degrees Celsius and 180 m pressure. Uh, the flame is modeled in axis symmetry to make the calculation more easily. Uh, the fuel used in this model is uh, methane, while the oxidizer consists of oxygen and nitrogen composition. All the model use exactly the same boundary and fuel, but different fuel air concentration. Current model research uh, reach the sorry. Current model uh, reach the mesh independent test at seventy. Uh, 70,000 mesh elements. This is the baseline case uh, that has been developed based on the flame 3CW for the standing flame, while for the shape and temperature, validation of flat flame are both used in 3BW10 hub and flame 3BW30 hub. HAB is uh, stand for 
high above burner. Non primit uh, standing flame was established for all cases in different oxidizer composition. Present study are based on Hamza 2020 experiment study, as you can see the figure at the right side. DPM model setup. Uh, the PM model setup uh, is we set it up uh, to the interaction with continuous phase active, uh, update the DPM source every 10 flow iteration, and the parameter track from uh, for 500 millimeter from the inlet until to the uh, synthesis chamber. All right, uh, the injection type is surface, surface type. Really, surface is the particle is really from the air inlet. Uh, the particle type is in a gas, uh, no vaporization. Uh, particle material, nickel, nickel with uniform diameter. The catalyst diameter is 50 nanometer based on the research from uh, other group. The temperature is 300 Kelvin, it's set at 300 Kelvin. Uh, total flow rate is one time 10 to the power of 20 kilogram per second. Uh, physical model of the uh, Catalyst is spherical and the turbulent dis uh, are dis dis dispersion are active, uh, discrete random with uh, work model. So it's uh, replicate the uh, real problem, the experimental one. All right, the flame shape validation is basically compar comparing the actual flame in experiment with the expected flame that produced by the computational fluid dynamic of CFD. ZST line, stoichiometric mean mixture fraction, is used to compare the blue flame shape, as you can see, the blue flame shape produced by the CFD with the actual flame. As shown in the figure on the left side, we can see the flame height for actual flame is approximately same with the flame height given by the CFD. Uh, the temperature contour also gives the suitable temperature with the actual flame model. The temperature at the right side is baseline case for standing flame, which is flame 3 CW. Uh, the code is flame 3 CW. Uh, the blue flame height are approximately the same with the actual flame, so that the flame shape validation is uh, acceptable. Uh, this is the temperature validation that has been met. As we can see in the figure above, the blue line indicates the modeling temperature, which the orange line is experimental temperature. Uh, this is uh, the orange one is the experimental uh, data from experiment. The flame validation is done at 13 half uh, Y mesh. Uh, the temperature experiment model gives slightly lower than predicted temperature from CFD. It occurred due to the losses in form of energy, which make the result low accuracy or low accurate. But the temperature validation is assumed to be acceptable because the temperature still coincident at the certain area. Uh, this is 30 particle was deployed in the DPM model, uh, which is uh, this first phase model, phase model. Only the particle that has been re uh, relevant parts selected to be analyzed. All the 30 particle is released from the oxidizer inlet and it reached to the synthesis chamber. Uh, the particle select consists of shortest residence time, moderate residence time, and longer res longest residence time. Uh, they will uh, they will plot the flame structure plot, temperature and species versus time, temperature and species versus half, CNT versus time, and CNT versus half. The flame structure uh, plot show the temperature for particle two, which has been deployed. The CNT start to grow in at 1,200 uh, millisecond, which is at 130 millimeter half. The particle achieve high temperature at 1,200 millisecond which is 1,500 Kelvin. The CNT lab produce is 17 micron meter. Uh, the flame structure plot show the temperature for particle three, which has been deployed. The CNT start to grow at 700 millisecond, which is at 107 millimeter half. The particle achieve high temperature at 380 millisecond, which is approximately 1,500 Kelvin. The CNT line produce is 29 micrometer. The flame structure plot show the temperature for particle 20, which has been employed. The CNT start to grow at, uh, it grow twice, uh, which is the first one at 1,100 millisecond at 140 millimeter half. 
and at 1200 millisecond at 190 millimeter half. The particle achieve high temperature at 1100 millisecond, which is approximately 650 Kelvin, while it goes higher again in 1200 millisecond at 720 Kelvin. It is due to the uh, particle moving a uh, movement which uh, go go beyond the uh, the boundary and then it come against due to the turbulence. The CNT line produce is shortest compared to the other particles. Uh, the best particle parts which can grow CNT with highest length is particle three compared to the another particle which is uh, that I uh, present before. So that the particle tree are choose to further analyze for other flames configuration. From the result obtained, it can be concluded that increase the oxidizer will affect the CNT line produce. Uh, the result obtained for particle tree at each different flame configuration can be seen in the table above. Uh, flame tree AW produce highest CNT line, which is 30 micrometer, while the flame tree DW configuration produces the shortest one. CNT length about 21 micrometer. Increase the oxidizer will narrow the CNT growth. The region for 70% CNT length produced from maximum length of CNT. While increasing the oxidizer also affect on the temperature of the flame. As you can see, uh, the growth region, which is at 120 millimeter half to 140 millimeter half for flame 3 AW and 3 BW, 122 to 136 millimeter half, flame 3 CW, 118 to 135 millimeter half, and 3 DW, 117 to 134 millimeter half. Uh, so this that is the growth region. So as the conclusion, the higher the oxidizer concentration, the lower the growth region for CNT lamp produce. It is because the carbon deposition or excess carbon become lower. So the production of CNT is slightly decreasing in growth area. The CNT lamp produce also decrease while increase the oxidizer. The CNT growth is not depending on the time exposure to the flame, but the right streamline position is the most important to produce the high CNT length. The result also showed the higher the height growth of single wall carbon nanotech is consistently predicted at half of approximately 120 millimeter to 140 millimeter half, which indicates an optimal range of half for single wall carbon nanotech grow in aerosol based synthesis. So that's all from me. Thank you.